Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 75th anniversary of the Orange Ulster BOCES Youth in Government Program. 75 years. All of our students have now been assigned to different departments and are on their way of enjoying the morning and will meet up for a great luncheon and uh, ceremony uh, at that point as well. All the legislators have been seated. Uh, welcome to the legislative chambers. Uh, the new chambers, I hear a lot of positive comments. People, first time they're here, uh, they did a beautiful job. So this is where the Orange County legislat Legislature meets. I am an Orange County Legislator. Uh, several of my fellow legislators are here in the audience as well, and they will be joining the students uh, after their mock legislative session. Legislators, are you ready? Yes. Okay. On your, in front of you, you sit in the actual seats that we sit and pass laws and argue and debate. Today you are going to argue and debate. You've all heard, and I know you're all knowledgeable on it, about New York State talking about legalizing recreational marijuana. Be clear on this now. There's legalization of medical marijuana, which we have. This is legalization of recreational marijuana. And then there's another issue called decriminalization. Okay? And I know that, that you're smart, you know, okay, well, so the legalization of recreational marijuana does not just mean, oh, I can go someplace and buy marijuana. It also includes edibles, things like pop cars, gummy bears, lifesavers. So it goes beyond that. Uh, last year, Governor Cuomo, our governor, said, marijuana is a gateway drug. This year, he said, it's a moneymaker. Mr. Governor, what is it? Is it a gateway drug, a moneymaker, both? So we want to hear from you today. We want you to debate. And remember, when you debate, when you talk, we talk about civility. Many of you have been part of this program a long time, so I sound like a, a, a recording over and over again. You don't have to agree with the person sitting across from you. But we ask that you respect that person. You don't have to agree with what they're saying when they're arguing. You say, okay, I respect you. I have to say that I disagree. You respect that we disagree. Sadly, in our society today, we do not have civility, do we? We have screaming and yelling and ranting and raving. You are the next generation of leaders. You are the folks that will talk and discuss. Hey, I don't agree with you know, your ideas on marijuana, but I respect it. I believe in your day. Okay, I would now like to invite up to sing to start our ceremony from Pinebush High School, Mrs. Evans, Senior Choir. Ladies and gentlemen, come on up. And I ask everyone to stand. Come on up, right up here. For the singing of our national anthem. Thank you, Pinebush High School and Mrs. Evans. Okay, I'd like to now call upon our health commissioner, 
Dr. Gelman. Dr. Gelman is going to give our legislators uh, a professional, a, 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 from a health standpoint, uh, her feelings, her, her, her research, her understanding of the legalization of recreational marijuana. So Dr. Gelman will speak for about 10 or 15 minutes or so. Uh, I would ask you to digest her information. I would ask you to kind of flip through the SAM report that you have in front of you. I would ask you to kind of have the ideas that you have in your mind already about marijuana and be prepared to open up a debate, a discussion, and in the end we'll take a roll call as to whether or not you, as legislators, want to legalize recreational marijuana. Dr. Gelman, oh, if you're going to speak uh, when you get to the point, there's a button in front of you. When you speak, speak clearly into the mic so everyone can hear you. Please don't talk over anyone. There's a red light that will come on. So if a red <coughs> light is on, it means the mic is live. But you don't need it on now, okay? Dr. Gelman. Good morning, legislators. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for having me here today. We are discussing the issue of legalization of recreational marijuana in your state. Uh, we believe it's a tremendously important issue that would impact not only the residents of our community, but um, residents of New York State across the board. Um, you have the same report in front of you, but if you were to look at a recreational marijuana use across the nation, uh, we are experiencing uh, quite a bit of negative impacts to the public at large. We will see an increase in motor vehicle accidents. Uh, we will see an increase in diagnosed cannabinoid hyperemesis uh, disorder and admissions to the ER uh, as a result of prolonged marijuana use. Um, you will see reports on edibles where still to this day we don't have regulations in place for uh, adequate concentration levels and agreed upon serving sizes and values. The sourcing is still um, an issue for both CBD and THC, which are derivatives of uh, uh, marijuana. Uh, the edibles and the oils and a lot of other ingestibles um, pose a threat to the public at large as well as to public health and its resulting programming. For, um, we can completely understand the um, social justice component, and that's not what we're here to discuss today from the health standpoint, because for social justice, for the social justice piece, it's enough to just um, decriminalize the possession of uh, recreational marijuana for personal use. However, to legalize recreational marijuana across the board would pose a tremendous burden to our fiscal, um, to our fiscal reporting, to our services and support services across the board, for instance, for uh, my department and just gauging the impact for the programs of the Department of Health, uh, we have the Environmental Division, which is responsible for sanitation and engineering services, and a part of that is restaurant inspections and uh, inspections of food facilities. Uh, when you go to examine edibles, uh, typically, um, seldom federal uh, are the manufacturing facilities standalone facilities, usually they are co-manufactured or contract manufactured in existing facilities, so that means that bakeries, stores, um, candy factories, chocolate factories, uh, co-manufacture the edibles with containing CBD and THC on existing equipment, so cross-contamination is a tremendous concern. So for our sanitation department, how do we actually test the remaining food source? How do we ensure that the public that does not want THC in their food um, actually does not have it there? The other argument that we hear for um, in support of legalizing recreational marijuana is the fact that it will help our farming community and agriculture that has been suffering um, with the decline of production and growth in dairy um, as well as just the agricultural industry um, across the board. To that, I would say that consider the fact that we are preoccupied with the water sourcing and the quality of our water with the FOA and the FOSs. What about the cross-contamination that would happen as a result of uh, marijuana growth? Typically, when you grow marijuana, there is a runoff, and the water runoff will end up in the public drinking water. Now, do we want that? Um, finally, a lot of the arguments that are made uh, in support of, um, so the people that are adamant supporters of recreational marijuana use, I would ask, uh, are you okay with just decriminalizing possession?
actually personal use rather than uh, legalizing across the board? And if not, who are you okay with utilizing recreational marijuana on a daily basis? Would you be okay with your cardiothoracic surgeon using it before performing open heart surgery and you and your family member? Are you okay with school bus drivers using? And if so, when? Because currently, you do not. This is not an FDA-approved product for use, for ingestion, or use otherwise topically. Um, there are no concentration doses that we can agree upon in the medical community across the board. So um, again, who are we okay with using recreational marijuana um, on a day-to-day -day basis? Are you okay with your pilot? I just flew on Monday and the pilot uh, was quite quick with the landing, but uh, what if you just partook a little bit before taking off? Um, so that, that is really the question because um, when we take it out of the moral and the ethical and the personal conversation now of what it means to it, each individual and each one of us sitting here today, what does it really mean and how does it impact the population at large? Because from what we are seeing in the preliminary reports you have in front of you uh, coming out of Colorado and the states that have legalized are showing an increased incidence of motor vehicle accidents their insurance rates have quadrupled or quintupled. Their workforce um, is threatened because currently they're having a tremendous issue recruiting a trained staff that does not use a recreational marijuana. And clearly, when you're working with heavy machinery or you are um, in a profession that would entail not utilizing drugs on a daily basis, um, what do we say to those business owners? Um, and the other conversation to it is. Their liability insurance is going up, their auto insurance is going up, and uh, I believe in New York State our auto insurance rates are high enough as is. So clearly there is a vast impact fiscally um, to the health and wellness um, of individuals. Edibles pose a threat to younger members of the public, and uh, we are having clear reports, and we, have, we do have evidence-based um, reporting and publications stating that there are increased incidences of schizophrenia, with um, younger and, um, and, and um, younger uh, utilization rate in younger people. So clearly, we do have health impacts, we have fiscal impacts to consider, and ultimately, a lot of the reasoning uh, that consider um, fiscal benefits, the purported fiscal benefits are uh, non existent on the local level because uh, from Colorado, if you're looking at the fiscal graph, for every dollar they take in on a state level, they spend anywhere from four and a half to ten dollars on supporting programming on a local level. So I will leave you with that thought and I will uh, entertain any questions that you have at this time. Thank you for your attention. Right. 
So you would see that indicated in your report that they pretty much quadruple the rates that Colorado has experienced in terms of uh, motor vehicle accidents due to marijuana use um, have pretty much quadrupled from what they are seeing since the litigation, since the start of the litigation. And just to clarify, that's just for marijuana? Correct. Yes. Is there a way to measure the amount of THC in the blood? Currently, the test, due to differences in the amount of rates, it's quite unclear, and there is no quick or rapid method of determining that. So people clear it at different rates. That's why, for instance, roadside, you are unable to detect that right now, which poses a tremendous issue as you would imagine for law enforcement that Yes? Um, you mentioned how, like, Possibly doctors could be using marijuana. Um, are doctors tested for like alcohol? Um, are they tested? The, sorry, well, I that word. Currently, if you were to involve on the job, especially um, due to professional limitations, clearly you are unable to do so. And if you're suspected of doing so, yes, you would be tested on the job. And obviously, you're not allowed to do that. But you wouldn't have the same luxury with marijuana. So currently, I think it's a premature conversation to have. So 
if we were to legalize in a year, it would be extremely premature and our infrastructure would not be ready to deal with the windfall, both fiscally and medically where we stand right now. That's not to say a decade from now there's not a rapid test that you can administer which would help with the issues we're facing today, but currently that's not the case. So if you were to suspect someone of uh, um, using, unlike alcohol, you would not have a quick rapid test that you can easily defend. And um, also excluding one entity or another that would pose an issue in and of itself in terms of legislating it and law enforcement because do you only exclude pilots? Do you exclude train operators? Do you exclude surgeons, doctors? And the list goes on and on. Are you okay with school bus operators? Are you okay with regular drivers that are passing you on the highway? And the list goes on and on. So ultimately when we're really considerate, there has to be a standardized approach to how we legalize if that's ever to come, but currently we're not there yet. Yes, go ahead. Uh, so I was just looking on page 20 of the SAM report, uh, Colorado opioid related overdose fatalities. <laughs> and I'm sure everyone can see that there is a substantial increase after legalization, before and after I would say. And as everyone knows, we are dealing with an opioid crisis here in Orange County. So I was wondering for your uh, professional opinion on this. Do you think we would experience the same incline of opioid-related deaths if legalization were to occur in Orange County? Uh, that's a tremendous point. Thank you for bringing that up. So uh, we are in the midst of an opioid epidemic, and currently to bring up legalization of marijuana is a bit counterintuitive because uh, um, I think if, if we don't look to history, we're damned to repeat it. At one point, uh, Coca-Cola contained co cocaine in it until we found out that it was addictive. And in the early 1900s, we used to, once we found out it was addictive, we used to treat cocaine addiction with opiates, which is heroin essentially. Um, so if we don't look to history, um, unfortunately, especially in this scenario currently, we are uh, really damned to repeat it. And um, un also, if you were to look at the demographic maps, you, you have the opportunity to look at that as well. Um, a lot of the health inequity components that we're attempting to address now uh, with socioeconomics and uh, sociodemographics, um, unfortunately the tobacco industry has really taken over the recreational marijuana trade, I would say, and it's sort of the next frontier for capitalizing and uh, really making money. And they are targeting the same protected populations that we are trying to help. And a lot of the mapping that you would look to for alcohol distribution and for tobacco distribution, unfortunately, um, match one for one. If, if you were to correlate the two, uh, they, they really are utilizing the same tactics and marketing ploys to target vulnerable populations, to target minors, um, and that's really their n net um, of uh, peddling the recreational marijuana too. And clearly edibles being the vehicle, it's a lot easier because brownies and uh, gummy bears, you can't tell me that uh, children would not be susceptible to that. So basically where like the um, weed goes, I'm sorry, marijuana goes, nicotine, alcohol, that all follows afterwards. Pretty much. And it still stands in terms of being the gateway drug. Uh, studies have shown time and time again. And I will say THC has been utilized in its pure form. THC has been utilized in tab form as an anti-emetic um, and as an appetite stimulant uh, both in children and adults uh, in prescription forms, in tablet forms for decades now. So we do have viable evidence of it being an anti-emetic and an um, appetite stimulant. However, I've yet to see analgesic properties, and I understand a lot of people saying it's helping with pain, it's help, and not to discount placebo effect, we don't have viable studies to, pro to prove the analgesic properties just as yet. Um, in terms of opioid use, um, it does exacerbate uh, the numbers that we're seeing in the incidence rates, and uh, it does show that in the states that they have legalized, not only did the rate not go down for opioid use, but uh, it, it has substantially gone up. So for anyone to claim that it's helping with the uh, addiction, 
you can't fight one addiction with another. Yes. Okay, so earlier you mentioned that a lot of these products are manufactured overseas, correct? No, I've mentioned that the oils and a lot of the products that are currently used in edibles specifically are manufactured and imported. Uh, a very small percentage is derived locally from products grown here. So if these are manufactured overseas, like the oil products, if you just moved manufacturing over here, wouldn't that not only make it safer, but also create more jobs in the economy? Right, and that's, um, that's the part that I was saying where we're not there yet, we're not there today. Is there a possibility that a decade from now, if we are to consider a multifaceted approach to, Im to implementing this, would that not work? Potentially. But in order for that to happen, we have to de uh, determine what are the applicable concentration levels, what are the dosage, what are the serving sizes, plus would you use any other product that's not FDA approved? Would you give that to your, to your parents, to your children, to your family, even to your pets? So currently, we're just not there yet. I believe it's a premature discussion to discuss legalizing across the board. Can we potentially do that a decade from now or two decades from now when we've addressed all of these issues, agricultural runoff into water sources, uh, energy use, environmental hazards, um, even impact to our local programming. If we are to increase our program and the burden to our, um, to our services, early intervention services, if you notice they, they, they had done a blind survey there and the dispensaries in Colorado were recommending that pregnant women utilize this for nausea and vomiting. You don't think that would impact the fetus or uh, then early intervention programs and services that we currently have now? So even for just my department and kind of sticking to my area of expertise, it would impact every single program that we um, have right now. And that's just for the Department of Health. Not speaking of Department of Social Services, Department of Mental Health and other issues that would um, arise from that. So essentially what I'm saying is, can we do it? Potentially, we can do anything if we really put our minds to it, but we're not there yet. We have to give that time and really um, a lot of thought. Yes. All right, I have two questions. Number one, um, how long do these uh, marijuana tests take? And two, how much does it cost taxpayers? So currently, as I mentioned, because there is no standardized one test, you can have test results within 24 hours. You can have test results within 48 hours. Some of the testing could take upwards of three to six days. Uh, plus, we really have to consider uh, the m uh, metabolic rate for the individual and how quickly they clear that through their body. So by the time we administer the test, they may have already cleared it, depending on the concentration doses, on the amounts used of, and pr uh, the format as well. Have they ingested it? Have they smoked it? Was it uh, combustible versus an ingestible? So, um, and because there's no standardization, the cost can balloon up depending on the provider. So there's really no one, unfortunately, answer that I can give you for that, currently. And there was a second question? Or that was the cost? Thank you. Thanks. Um, just kind of jumping off what he was talking about, uh, referring to revenues. On page 28, I was uh, just analyzing uh, the revenues that states have received from marijuana uh, once they legalize it. Now, these are uh, particularly low. I mean, even Colorado it says Colorado projected it would take an 118 million in its first year retail sales, but underperformed by 42 percent. And after a steady decline in prices, they had to raise their tax rate to compensate with overproduction. Uh, now, I was wondering if you knew that this being such a new product on the market, would you see revenues increasing over time? So to address it, and that's a perfect point, plus I, I always uh, caution you, and I'll play devil's advocate here, even though that really plays into my position on this, but um, you really have to um, understand your sourcing. So Sam obviously has the position that's against uh, legalizing recreational marijuana use currently. And you can look to other sourcing to really determine revenue and how much has come in. Plus, a lot of times they cite the fact that, well, criminal marijuana sales will go down as uh, legalized marijuana sales, but that has not been the case across the board. So th at least that holds true. However, I will say in terms of revenue, 
Numbers are interesting, even though mathematics is finite. Uh, sometimes uh, the, there are uh, there's quite a bit of argument and back and forth on how much revenue it actually brings in. I will say one thing without citing exact numbers. Regardless of the amount of uh, revenue that's brought in, please keep in mind that this is revenue brought in on the state level. So us considering local impact, locally we will be spending a lot more. So the states, regardless of how much they brought in, even if it was the amount that they've projected, or maybe like you've mentioned, it's a new product and it'll take two to three years to actually bring in projected revenues and they really have to support it because they're kind of all in and they're committed. Please keep in mind that this is revenue brought in on the state level. And just because the state has met their projections, or even if they had not, locally you will still spend a lot more than you're bringing in because the local levy, the local revenue brought in, will still not cover what you're spending on the local level. And that's why this is quite lucrative on the state level because essentially that will be mainly revenue brought in on the state level. And some money spent, but they're attempting to curb the money spent. And right now, um, being on the committee discussing this with the state, they're attempting to really put a band-aid on the spending to say, well, it's enough to give money for public health and mental health for outreach and education. And that's a minuscule amount of what we will actually be spending on the local level to com combat all the untoward effects uh, that the public will experience from utilization. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, from strictly a medical standpoint, yes. uh, do you agree with 21 being an appropriate age to legally buy marijuana? I don't agree with any age. If I, if I had my way, I would say that absolutely no use at any given point. There's really no reason for it. There's really no reason for putting this into your body for, for any reason whatsoever. That's the medical standpoint. Is marijuana physically harmful in any way? Physically harmful, yes. So as I've mentioned, uh, um, there are clear cases, first of all, of early onset of uh, um, schizophrenia. So there are reports uh, with early use of um, actually having higher um, chances of uh, having mental disorders and schizophrenia. There are impacts to short-term memory loss. So neurologically speaking, there are tremendous amounts of report um, as actually having a, a, a quite an impact. And now with what we're seeing in Colorado because of edibles and because of the concentration levels that we've discussed, the uh, cannabinoid hyperemesis disorder that I've mentioned is a diagnosed condition and they are seeing it in uh, un uh, unprecedented amounts in Colorado and other states that have legalized. So is there physiological effect of use? Yes, absolutely. Yes? Is this due to people being more likely to use marijuana who have these psychological uh, effects already? Or is it just because of marijuana, has that been proven? Ch chicken or the egg argument. It could be a confounding variable that remains to be seen, but the studies really tried to eliminate having history of schizophrenia in the family or any other confounding variables that would um, really deter from the point of the studies. And the two main studies that I'm citing have really proven that it is more than likely due to marijuana use. And um, the short-term memory loss is quite apparent. That that's, has been something that's been uh, pr proven in the medical community at least. Yes. So I'm, just so, I'm sorry, I'll just, I think you've been asking, to, sorry about that. Um, kind of going back to the, um, the pilots and heavy machines, sorry to backtrack, but I understand your fears about, you know, a professional. How about we sort of maybe left it up to the employer? Obviously if you're flying a plane, you work for a company, usually that is fairly wealthy and you can afford drug tests, leave it up to the employer if they want to drug test the individual. I'm sure if marijuana was legalized still on the federal level, federal employees, military, and whatnot, they would still be drug tested. So, so that's the other uh, tremendous point that you bring up. It is still federally illegal. So for federal employees, so a federally qualified health center that's in our county, uh, with New York State legalizing it, it would be legal on the state level. It would still be illegal for federal employees to use. Um, however, because the testing is still unclear, we're not at that stage yet, would you feel comfortable going into surgery kind of, well, it's a 50-50 chance, you know, hopefully the employer tested. 
Well, I'm, I'm sure a hospital would drug test a, a urine test. I'm glad you have that level of confidence. Uh, at times, I, I wouldn't. I, yeah, I'm, I'm fairly certain a hospital, reputable hospital, you know, you see maybe Orange Regional, a city, they would, I'm sure, drug test their employees. Otherwise, if God forbid something went wrong, that would put a stain on the hospital. And you're an optimist. That, that's good. That's good to see. Um, I think there was a question. A couple more right. questions we'll get to here. Yeah. Oh, uh, right. Don't they already drug test employees? Right. So going back to the drug testing, yes. Um, and not all employers drug test. Uh, there are some uh, employers that uh, require drug testing. A lot of them are randomized drug testing. And going back to tra uh, trace amounts, going back to clearance, going back to uh, each individual being different, going back to concentration amounts and levels. Um, and you can show up to work with this being undetectable in your system at times. Uh, now, what if you just uh, sneak out for a lunch break and have a couple of gummy bears? How do you really account for that as an employer? And as an employer, that poses a tremendous risk and issue. And also, when? Do you test every day before you come into work? Do you swipe uh, every morning? You know, you swipe your card and you give a drop of blood. And at what point does it become intrusive also? So it, it, it's just very difficult at this point. Um, just to clarify about the schizophrenia statement, isn't schizophrenia passed down through genetics? Right. So, so typically it is, and uh, if you were to read the studies, um, a lot of times they really try to look at the genetic factors and the heredity and the contributing factors, and in the studies that are cited, they really try to eliminate the cohort that was used the only identifiable factor that they can come up with was the uh, prolonged marijuana use. So, just to clarify again, so using marijuana, due to the studies that you've read, using marijuana for a prolonged amount of time would- and early on. And early on would like speed up the development Correct. of schizophrenia? You're more than likely to actually actively have schizophrenia. So, would it cause schizophrenia or would it just bring it up through your genetics? Like speed it up. So causation. Um, the argument is, and that's what's really cited in the studies, is had had you not have had the early exposure and not have used, you are more much less likely to actually exhibit schizophrenia later in life, due to the study that they've shown. All right. That that was the only factor that they could find to account for actually having schizophrenia. Like causing schizophrenia. Correct. All right. Okay, one more question, then we have to I think there were two more. One more question. Okay. Strictly from a medical standpoint, uh, what, do you, what group of people is more vulnerable to the use of marijuana? It's very difficult to say what group would be more vulnerable to use, like but- Age group. Oh, age group. So typically we're seeing a white male, I would say 20 to 25 actually habitual use, and just, just like with other drug disorders. Um, if, if content, um, so if it was legalized, would content be more clearly stated and in a sense be safer? If it was legalized, would? Like, would it Contents be more clearly stated, like the amount of THC, the amount of the concentration levels. They may or may not be, because again, keep in mind this is not something that's FDA or USDA approved, so there would really be no mandate to show concentration levels or ingredients in it. Thank you. Now we're gonna have, we're gonna have to end the discussion now. Appreciate it. Okay. Okay. I know. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Bond. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, legislators, uh, you've heard an expert testimony here from Dr. Gelman, our health commissioner. You have your own information. You have a SAM report in front of you. Normally what would happen now is we, if, we, if we had a lot of time, we would invite the public to speak in a pro and con, those in favor of the legalization of recreational marijuana, those opposed to it. All of you have an opinion, some very strong opinions. Don't be afraid of those opinions. 
If you feel very strongly about legalizing rec rec excuse me, recreational marijuana, then absolutely fight for your position. If you don't believe in the legalization of recreational marijuana, then fight vigorously against it. So we open up the floor now. There are 21 of you, Mr. Chairman, Secretary are here. You will guide the discussion. You'll kind of keep order here. And just before 10 o'clock, we're gonna take a vote. So if you are the legislators making this decision for the entire state of New York today, how are you gonna vote? Yes, in favor of recreational marijuana, or no, against it. So what happens now is debate. And don't be afraid, don't be shy. Remember, it's your opinion. Your opinion is valuable. Your opinion should be respected by all. You don't have to agree with that other person. You respectfully disagree and say, wait a minute, I've got a different idea. So, wherever you stand on this, I'm gonna open up the floor, don't be shy. Say, I'm in favor of voting yes because, I'm against this because, and let's go back and forth for about 15 or 20 minutes. Mr. Chairman, the floor is yours. You can open it up for debate. Call on volunteers. All right, uh, we will now open up for debate. Um, would anyone here like to start and give their opinion? All right, uh, you may start. As it stands right now, I believe, uh, uh, as a society as a whole in New York State, I believe it's going to take a lot more time before we could legalize marijuana. It's uh, clear to say that we do not know enough to legalize it, as it is uh, unknown effects, schizophrenia. We don't know. We need to do more of a study. We need to wait on it. We need to uh, be more cautious than to just go in uh, say we can legalize it, because it's gonna take more of a toll than we think it is. And as it stands, we should watch the other states who have already legalized it and uh, wait on what happens there. Would anyone like to respond to uh, what you said? So I think time could definitely be an issue. As our guest speaker said, we're not there yet. Well, the problem is our government and law tends to be reactive rather than proactive. It only responds to what has happened and not what will. Therefore, we should work on implementing standards and inspecting its production, setting codes, how to handle its administration, because that won't happen until after it's legalized. And I think it, there's an argument as to why like, fiscally this would make a lot of sense. Um, you could tax it heavily, even on the local level. It does create jobs if we move the manufacturing here, plus we would have more control over what goes into it because people use marijuana whether or not it's legal. So knowing what's in it would definitely be a lot safer. It would promote science and research to study its long-term effects and also to be able to find a like standardized test for it. It cuts down on people currently convicted for marijuana use, there would be less people in jail and prison, saves the taxpayers even more money, and she, our guest speaker even said that like in the city they won't prosecute, <coughs> but that's not true statewide, so at the very least it needs to be decriminalized. And I could agree, at least it could be decriminalized, but uh, uh, as it says, as I stand, I've, I agree with most of those points. If we sit back and do nothing, then nothing's gonna happen, but um, we already have some states that are legalized and we should as well be thinking about it. We should progressively move with it, but I'm not saying jump head first into it. Um, now, sorry, I'm gonna just get my thoughts together here. Um, my, one of my number one concerns with this, I, like, I'll refer back to a page, what page was it? I remember which page was it. It was a page on Colorado and legalization with opioid deaths. Now, um, Miss, I'm sorry, what's your last name, ma'am? Sir? So, thank you. Um, so, you want to talk about what's going, or you say that the government ignores like what's going to happen. So what I was looking back on with, uh, with Colorado was the increased amount of deaths with 
uh, use of opi opioids related to the legalization of recreational marijuana. Now, uh, I have been, uh, I've interned with uh, now New York State Senator Skoufis for two years, and that was one of our number one issues, was the opioid crisis. It was a very large issue among residents in the Hudson Valley, you know, Chester, Newburgh, uh, almost any town that you can think of. And currently, I think that any issue that would, or any issue or any policy, any legislative you know, piece of work that would prolong that issue or even increase it is not one that we need at the moment. And that's why I think that we should be more focused on cutting down the current problem we have than uh, implementing a new one that hasn't shown large amounts of profit in the states that's already been <coughs> legalized and has shown increased amounts of depth in the problem that we already have. So that's my thing. And I, I agree with your statement that we uh, need to wait a little bit longer with it. Uh, but something else I've realized is that it seems that as we, you know, uh, delve deeper and deeper in, into the research of recreational marijuana, we begin to see more of the side effects, we begin to see more of the negative side effects of it, not to mention uh, what our professional was saying about, you know, you have uh, cigarette companies, you, know, you have uh, tobacco, and then you have to worry about the vapes as well. So I think that it'll take more time to analyze the issue while also trying to deal with the ones we already have right now. So maybe later down the road, but I don't think that's our number one problem at the moment. And I think we can all say here that we are for decriminalization as well, but I don't think uh, the legalization of recreational uh, marijuana is our number one priority. Uh, all right, uh, would anyone like to uh, maybe <coughs> Would you like to respond? Yeah, I'd have to agree with a lot of what you said. Um, ultimately, I definitely believe it should be decriminalized. <coughs> Whether you agree with mar uh, use of marijuana or not, it is up to the person. That is their choice, what they want to make. Um, you know, but at the same time, maybe it should not be legalized at this moment. We do need more time. Um, however, I, I do notice some of the studies seem to be very subjective. You know, it, it's there's not. It's hard because there's not a clear, you know, uh, cut sort of science of looking at this. Um, so maybe we could, I would say more time and try to narrow down our studies because the relation to opioids and schizophrenia, uh, showing uses in um, schizophrenia increasing, it could be the case that marijuana caused that, but it could be a coincidence, for lack of a better term. Um, we need to get. We need to narrow down our studies and actually see the side effects. But um, once again, I believe we could all agree decriminalization definitely should be on the docket. Um, as a chairman, I will try to remain unbiased here and uh, hear both sides of the story. So, is there anyone that does not agree with the uh, previous viewpoints that have been stated here? Yeah, uh, you may speak. Okay, so <clears throat> let me just preface my opinion with the um, outright statement that I do support the uh, legalization of marijuana as a rec recreational substance. And I think the primary um, impetus for my opinion is that we are fundamentally approaching this issue inappropriately. As legislators, we have a higher responsibility to protect the liberties of our constituents to engage in whatever recreational practices within reason, of course, and I, th I think there's a, a plenty of body of evidence that marijuana is not radically different than alcohol and tobacco and a bunch of other things that we just sort of let slip under our, under our purview of, um, of how we're going to modify our, uh, you know, our laws. And, and, and to that point, I mean, do we want to make alcohol illegal? Do we want to make tobacco illegal? If we want to approach these issues that we're bringing up to the table, then absolutely, I will. If we're taking that approach towards it, absolutely, I'm in favor of that. But I think that's not our responsibility. We, we our higher responsibility to approach this issue immediately is 
overcrowding of prisons, a clear social justice issue that's been completely ignored in this uh, debate so, uh, thus far, that absolutely takes precedence over, um, you know, do we, do we have a five year or a 10 year timetable? This is like here and now, this has been an issue we've been experiencing as a country for decades and that the time is now. We are at a defining moment in our history to take bold action as Orange County legislators to um, continue to protect and defend the liberties of our um, constituents, not hypocritically and, and holistically. Um, very, I'm very pro-rights, so that's, that's kind of, that, that warrants more debate, and that's absolutely above all else the reason that we need to immediately legalize recreational marijuana. Thank you, and I yield. Thank you. Um, just in reference to a few previous statements, um, while I agree with like the pro right statement, I think with us as a county as well as a state, it is also our responsibility to make sure that people are doing it responsibly and making sure that it's safe to do, you know, um, because it's not FDA approved like um, our guest speaker was, t was saying, so I don't think it would be smart as a state or a county to be like, hey guys, it's recreational now, have some fun without having you know a little bit of background information on what to do if anything goes wrong. Um, I'm strongly in favor of decriminalizing and I'm also strongly in favor of having it be recreational, but in the future. I wanna make sure that there's at least some more information about like the effects. Um, I also wanna make sure that we have some other opinions other than Sam, because I think we were only given kind of one side of the story of uh, not uh, making it recreational. I think we should get some more sides of the story as well, other than Sam, if that was an opportunity that we could get today. But yeah, that, I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> so my fellow legislator sitting beside me would like to uh, express his opinion on uh, this matter. People already have the uh, ability to uh, partake of marijuana, albeit illegally. And um, while I'm for people's liberties, I also have the liberty not to have an inebriated bus driver. Um, it's harder to tell if someone is high than if someone is drunk, I would say this. Um, so for every use of machinery or um, operating, say, a plane or something, that could result in the injury of people around it. You can't test every time for that because the current test is 24 to 48 hours. I haven't heard a case, I mean, I haven't heard a case for commercialization outside of that people should be free to do it and nothing that has addressed the environmental effects, um, the strain on the current programs for people in sub, um, sorry, people in substance abuse recovery, acceptable doses, the testing. So it seems that even the people in favor of commercialization are saying that it isn't time yet, in which case your position would be changed from um, being pro-legalization right now to in the future. So that would be a no, I believe. And that is all. All right, uh, we are open to responses to uh, his statement. Uh, I'm sorry, I hope I'm not speaking out of term here. Uh, I agree with what you said. I, I think that a lot of us here have the same consensus of kind of uh, delaying this uh, particular issue and waiting for more research and waiting for more developments in this case. Uh, and I, just, I wanted to go back to a few other statements that were made before. I wanted to get in a word edgewise there. Uh, one would be regarding Sam, uh, the biosource. Now, I agree as well that we should be open to other uh, researches, that we should be open to other organizations, but this does list a multitude of uh, separate organiza organizations they work with. It's not like it's just one, it's made up of American Society of Addiction Medicine, American Academy of uh, Adriatic, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, it goes on and on over 30 state affiliates. On I'm sorry, sir, in the back, I, I don't know your name. I just want to go back to a few things you said, uh, respectfully, of course. Um, 
I just, I would also like to clarify that there is a clear difference between decriminalization and legalization here. Uh, so if you're caught with possession of marijuana and if it's decriminalized, you're not going to be thrown automatically into the ringer. Uh, as far as civil liberties go, I am, I'm a proud American, I'm a patriot. I believe that liberty is one of our number one values as a country, but I also believe it's the job of the government to protect those liberties and to protect its citizens from liberties that may hurt themselves to an extent. Uh, and as far as what you had mentioned with, you know, like alcohol causes bad things, you know, cigarettes cause bad things, you know, I see this a lot in debate and I think that there is a cutoff point, uh, you know, just it leads on to like an endless trail. And when you group all these things together, you're ignoring the fact that they do have separate side effects. They do have different statistics behind them. So while they may have negative effects altogether, you can't just group them together and call them the same. So those are just my thoughts on that. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, for the, the sake of time, there's a 10 a.m. legislative meeting scheduled here. First, I wanna commend you uh, for some excellent comments, some excellent arguments for your civility. You did a fantastic job, didn't they, folks? Your opinion matters. Your vote counts. I hope that those of you that are seniors graduating, best of luck in college, and, and go on and become that, that person that you are. Become that debater you are. Become that person that can argue. Become that person that can look at the facts. Some of you raised some very good points about the facts. Are there more facts? Are there more opinions? Of course there are. Don't just choose one, choose many. Look at them, look at them carefully, and then make your decision. So normally at this time what we do is we would call for a vote. And Mr. Chairman, you're gonna call for a vote. I counted 24 uh, legislators here, 24. I'm gonna allow the two gentlemen in the front, the chairman and the secretary to vote. Uh, there will be 24 votes. So we're gonna go around the room Mr. Chairman, you can start in the back and just go around, point to the person. You're going to vote yes or no, or some legislators will say yay or nay. So yes or no. So the resolution is to legalize recreational marijuana in New York State. If you are in favor of that, you're going to vote yes. If you're opposed to it, you vote no. Mr. Chairman, do your roll call. He's going to calculate the votes. All right, we will now begin. Um... Uh, yeah or no? Speak into your microphone. Speak into the mic so the audience can hear you, please. Yes. Yay. Yay. No. Yay. No. Yay. No. Either one, yeah. Yes. We'll now begin on the other side. Um, you're right here. No. No. Yes. No. Yes. 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 Nay. Nay. No. Nay. Nay. no. All right, well, can we redo this side? You guys were a little too quick. Really yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the last one. Okay. Yay. Yes. Nay. Nay. Okay, please tally the votes. Make sure you have 24. <laughs> oh, gentlemen in the front, you guys vote as well. You put them, put them where you want. Yes. You may want to tell the audience how you're voting also. No. Yay. Mrs. Reed, we may need a uh, opinion. We have it at 12-12. Mrs. Reed, <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Uh, you know what? I'll tell you, that's very good because when you talk to people in general in public, you will find half are in favor, half are against. So you guys 
uh, acts absolutely mirror uh, society, whether it's here in Orange County or pretty much in, in our country. So Mrs. Reed, we have a stalemate, 12-12, what do we do? Motion is defeated. Motion is defeated. So that ends our debate, that ends the vote. Great job, guys. Okay, those of you serving as legislators, or all of you, so the actual legislators now in a few minutes are gonna take the seats that you're in. You'll notice there are folding chairs nearby, so you don't have to go anywhere, just kind of get up and stretch your legs a little bit, but please sit behind the legislators and we're gonna start our 10 a.m. session. Thank you very much, great job, guys.